Welcome, everybody, to CSIS. My name is Jennifer Cook. I'm director of the Africa program here at CSIS. My job is very short here. It's mostly to instruct you on uh, your headsets, translation headsets. Um, let me just say, for English speakers, you turn it to 2M. For French speakers, you turn your channel to 2F. Pour les Français, uh, le canot 2F. Et uh, si vous avez des problèmes, uh, oh, open the front of the cassette and you'll see the, the buttons to change the channel. Uh, we at CSIS are so delighted today to host President Keita of Mali uh, for um, uh, uh, talking to us here today about s security in the Sahel. Um, I'm going to turn very quickly over to uh, Ambassador Mark Bellamy, who's a senior advisor here at CSIS, to make the introductions. I do want to say, too, we are, we are uh, completely oversubscribed. There are those of you in the uh, overflow room. If you haven't gotten a headset and you're an English speaker, uh, you can go down to the overflow room where it, where it will all be transmitted in English. Um, so again, this is a great honor and a great delight for us here at CSIS. And I'm going to turn over to Mark Bellamy. Thank you, Jennifer. Um, it is a great honor to uh, welcome to CSIS this morning His Excellency Ibrahim Boubacar Keita, President of the Republic of Mali. Mr. President, we are delighted uh, that in the midst of this very busy week in Washington, uh, you've agreed to join us today. And we're gratified by the very large uh, response to this event. So thanks to all of you in the audience this morning. Uh, I'd like to single out a couple of um, colleagues in, uh, in the audience today. Uh, Ambassador Mary Beth Leonard, U.S. Ambassador to Mali, thank you. Ambassador Leonard for helping us to put this program together a few weeks ago. Uh, I also want to welcome members of President Keita's cabinet today, Foreign Minister uh, Job. It's very nice to see you again, sir. Our time is limited today, so I'm not going to try to set the scene for President Keita's remarks. Uh, this is an audience, Mr. President, uh, which I think is well aware of the difficulties Mali has encountered over the past two or three years. And they are here today to hear from you on the way forward in Mali on matters ranging from the restoration of security to reconciliation in the North to governance reform. Just a very brief biographic note. As many of you are aware, President Keita was elected president in July 2013 in a free and fair election marked by high voter turnout. Prior to that, President Keita had served in many public capacity capacities over the years as prime minister, as foreign minister, as an ambassador, as a member of parliament, as a political organizer and political party leader, and as an academic. However challenging those positions were, I think it is fair to say, Mr. President, that the position you now occupy is unquestionably the most challenging of all, for Mali is well and truly at an historic turning point. President Keita has agreed to speak for, um, for several minutes. Uh, I don't know how long his remarks will run, uh, but we do want to leave time for questions. Um, I want to make sure our guests in the overflow room, as Jennifer said, uh, also have a chance to be interactive with us, so I hope we can take a few questions from that quarter as well. So thank you again, Mr. President, for joining us today and welcome to CSIS. Thank you, Ambassador. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, if I understand, it's me now. OK. OK. C'est à vous, Monsieur le Président. Mm.
certainly to answer questions. And uh, to pay tribute to your country for a very strong support United States gave to Mali since our crisis, the, a deep crisis, a very difficult one we went through during these last three years. As I said, after these uh, few words in a hard English, <laughs> in French, helps me much more comfortable. Monsieur le Président du Centre de
cette ville sacrée de Tombouctou. Dans cette ville sainte de Tombouctou, tout ce que l'on ne pouvait pas imaginer a été fait. Uh, each questioner to briefly identify himself or herself and to be very, very brief and direct in, in your questions so that we can take a maximum number of questions and, and hopefully generate a, uh, generate a good discussion. I'd like to, if I may, Mr. President, start off with a question. Um, uh, start off really by thanking you for, for your remarks. And... Um, ask uh, a, a question about uh, the north of, of Mali. Uh, and my question is whether um, uh, you um, can give us a, an update or a report on how the process of dialogue and reconciliation may be going uh, in the north, since I'm sure you would agree that this is essential to uh, winning over the confidence and loyalty of, of these populations that have suffered so much uh, in, in recent years. 
Merci, cher ami. Euh, D'abord, je dois dire que nous avons franchi une étape euh, très importante pour nous. Quand on veut discuter, et surtout discuter de paix, avec une volonté sérieuse d'arriver à un accord soutenable, euh, lasting, comme vous diriez, et global, il faut assurer la démarche du point de vue de la méthode. Beaucoup de persévérance, beaucoup de sens du compromis, réussi, euh, nous devons féliciter le ministre Diop, ministre des Affaires étrangères qui conduisait la délégation du Mali à, au Pôle-Palais d'Alger, d'avoir eu beaucoup de patience pour que nous ayons réussi le 24.
en réalité, les cadres ne sont pas tous... Non, quand le chantier est attaqué constamment. Perhaps, the mission of the foreign minister is to, to do his job. <laughs> it's to you to say to the other, uh, 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 is it late because of he's nobody look, will. He's looking after you. That's your problem, not mine. <laughs> That's your problem, not mine. 
I am yes. interested by what's occurring here. Mm -hmm. Donc, euh, ce n'est pas facile. Ces éléments-là, euh, des éléments ont été... I'm going to call upon a couple of our uh, audience uh, here, and we will take uh, perhaps three questions together, Mr. President, and you'll get a chance to answer all at once. Let me go to a question right here. There's a microphone just behind you. Hello, I'm uh, Dr. Donna Wells. My question is, is the United States losing the media war in Africa? What is the African media saying about the United States? Thank you. Is the US losing the media war? What is Africa saying about the United States? OK, good question. And back here, you, sir. You could pass the microphone to the edge there. Thank you. My name is Nia. You've already understood the question of Madame. OK. À l'image des États-Unis. Oui, oui, mm. l'image des États-Unis. Okay. Deuxième question. Born in Ghana, but I live in Washington, D.C., and I'm part of Mali Watch. Um, my question is, um, we understand that other communities non-Tuare communities were affected by the war and they have grievances. So are they also getting the attention of the government or is the government only dealing with the grievances of the Tuare community? Very good question. Very good, good Very good question. question. We'll take, we will take one more question from over uh, the, the woman with, yep, do not tell. on the edge there, then the black jacket, yes. Yes, with the stylish glasses and the black jacket. Uh, Brooke Stearns Lawson, I'm a senior organized crime advisor in USA's Africa Bureau. Um, you spoke about the issues of ungoverned spaces and of bolstering of um, violent non-state actors in terms of the implications of drug trafficking and illicit trafficking. And I'm wondering if you could speak a little bit about how do we address the erosion of legitimate and effective governance in the North also that's implicated in illicit trafficking. Vous avez compris, um, okay. compris elle, euh, sa question sur le trafic de drogue. Euh, et si cela... Première question, madame. Je...
covered that to, to some extent about the question of governance in the north and these ungoverned spaces and what the government needs to do to reestablish legitimacy and, and so forth. So I'm going to uh, go to a couple of questions that have come to us from the overflow room, and these relate uh, a bit to um, the discussion that, that's, that we are having here. Here's, here's one interesting note. Do you envision Mali becoming a federal state? No. Giving. <laughs> okay. Next question. Definitely uh, no. No. Um, mm -hmm. Because the, the conditions, our environment is certainly totally different from what you're used to. Mm -hmm. And I know what could be inside that concept. That's why I am. Opposed. Absolutely. No. All right. Uh, let me go. Let me go to a question here. You've had your hand up a little while. Monsieur le Président de la République. Est-ce qu'on avait? Sound for say. Would you like to comment on Madame, that? Madame, cela a été le cas avant. C'est avec. Washington bureau chief of the African Sun Times, and I'm also a founding member of Mali Wash, the first Mali Wash, which was uh, for Ma built, put together by Malian Coastal Malians, and the second Mali Wash during the crisis. And here I'm holding a, a petition signed by Malians worldwide that I should enter the president. I would like, my question would to the president would be to know his impression about the meeting with the president Obama and what, has, what did he, he will get, take back to Mali from the US. Okay. So I have to give what him will this. You? you remain. Okay, these, these always go through the foreign ministry. You, you, you remain a negative activist. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Back, uh, far in the back here. Yes. Ben, on the, all the way to the back. All the way. Right and there are two right hands up. The one on your, there you go. Bonjour, Monsieur le Président de la République. Je m'appelle Abdoulaye Basirou Keita. Et uh, je suis à uh, Ma question se rapporte plutôt à ce que le monsieur, a, au fond de la salle, avait euh, plutôt posé comme question. Qu'est-ce qui a été fait pour, que, pour mettre... An iceberg. 
a Vulcan, Vulcano. Vulcano. I am, I am the head of a state. Um, things are not so easy. Sometimes you should, you should have the means of the politics you want to to yeah. Uh, soyons patients. Soyons patients. Il a dit
hear about the impressions that you would take away from the summit, Mr. President. I you talked a little bit about that in your opening remarks. I don't know whether you wish to add anything in response to the question here in front about what you will take home. Je voudrais retenir l'intérêt. That's what I was hoping to hear. <laughs> we'll take a question right here. Thank you. Good morning, Mr. President. Good morning. My name is Vivian Lowry Derrick. I'm the, I have this NGO, Bridges, and we're the group that convened the second Mali Watch. And we worked um, for the restoration of democracy and the territorial integrity of Mali. My question involves the military, because I know that you are restructuring, and it's a two-part question, really. Um, in the training, is there an emphasis on civilian control of the military and on adherence to the Constitution? That's the first part of the question. And then secondly, is there any effort to integrate women into the military? Because if women are integrated, then some of the sexual violence against women is somewhat mitigated. So I would appreciate it if you would um, just give us an update on what's happening in terms of military restructuring. Thank you. Thank you, Vivian. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>
it'll be my honor to, to succeed doing that. La deuxième question. So one now. The many, 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 many colonels, many uh, of the officers um, in uh, our different arms. Um, you don't have a Marine troop because Mali is a landlocked country, totally landlocked. Um, also, uh, no longer have uh, air, air troops. Only, uh, how can I say, um, National Guard and uh, within them, uh, uh, National Guard and uh, La Militaire, we have a lot of, a lot of women. And no, no segregation, absolutely. No segregation at all. So, uh, yeah. One of those who have been the most courageous during the battle in the northern part of Mali, a, a, a lady, Colonel Nema Sagara, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful lady. <laughs> Elle a dirigé ses hommes dans des conditions difficiles. Thirty percent of the army, and you see, Madame, to be to, to be to be to be complete, to be complete, Madame Michelle Obama, a honoré la femme malienne. been awarded by Madame Obama at, uh, two months ago. That's also the new Malian woman. Mo ah! <laughs> Madame, <laughs> you were hiding. <laughs> you, you, you speak fr uh, French better than I speak English. I <laughs> speak uh, English very well. I'm going to take a question here, you, sir, and then a question on the very back. Bonjour, tout le monde. Bonjour. Moi, je m'appelle Sheikh Amala Diab.
Hello, oh, Mr. President. Assalamu alaikum. Kaira Lata, Kaira Beh. I am from Gambia and I'm an exiled journalist in the United States for over 10 years. Yesterday we felt half of your colleagues that were in Washington are not supposed to be here. They have no respect for the rule of law. They do not respect citizens. They are very brutal. Well, we respect you. You are elected democratically and we are watching you. When you guys said what do you discuss about the bad image that some of your colleagues, Mugabe, Bashir, my own president, Yame, what, what do you guys talk together? What do you advise them? Some of you who respect your citizens. I'm here over 10 years. I can't go home. I've been arrested. I've been jailed. I've been tried just because I write articles. When you all said, some of them don't respect the AU, the ECOWAS laws that you own, precedents install. What do you advise them? Okay, thank Madam, you. Madam, you know, I've been a student leader in Paris while I was there. A tough one. And I used to demonstrate. Nowadays, Madam, please I understand that uh, in my position, I'm not allowed to criticize a colleague from another country. Each country, every people says is the right to be rightly how can I say, governed, but uh, I understand you, I understand you, and be sure I remain the student leader I've been. <laughs> It's all. <laughs> How are we? Are we okay? Okay. We have some more time? Any more questions? No. Okay. All right. One more question. No. <laughs> all right. Okay. Um, well, Mr. President, I, I'm sure that this, you can tell by the number of hands that there are still many questions out here in this audience. Uh, and I think that also is an indication of the great level of interest in this country absolutely, absolutely. Uh, for uh, what's going on in Mali today. I think uh, it's also maybe an indication of the high expectations here of, uh, of your presidency. And sometimes it's the bad luck of presidents to have high expectations no matter what country they come from. Uh, but I want to, uh, on behalf of CSIS and on behalf of our guests today, thank you again for uh, agreeing to spend this, uh, this time with us. Uh, thank you for your remarks. Thank you for your candor. And I want to wish you, I'm sure we all want to wish you safe travels home and every success in the difficult tasks that you have ahead of you back in Mali. So thank you, sir. And please join me in thanking <laughs> President Kepa.